we've got this evening's cocktail hour sorted thanks to Inverosh's brand ambassador, Bo Saunders. Now, Bo is here to tell us how to make the perfect Inverosh GNT at home. Bo, take it away. This all looks incredible. Awesome, ladies. So it's actually a lot simpler than most people think. So the first thing that you would do is put some ice into your copa glass, as we like to call it. Is there a reason why the gin glass is designed or shaped that way? Because I've noticed that there are different glasses for different drinks, like the whiskey glass comes in a different way, a gin glass. Is there a reason? Does it affect the taste of the drink? Exactly. So the whole idea behind the, the shape of the gin glass is remember you're putting a whole bunch of ingredients in there. So when you pick it up and you kind of bring it to your, your nose and your mouth where your senses are, that's really what brings it to you and enhances that. So there's definitely a reason why it's shaped the way it is. All right, ladies, so I'm gonna make an amber gin and tonic over here. So we've got our ice in our glass. Why amber? Amber is uh, most people's favorite <laughs> gin. Um, it's also got a very beautiful color. So it's always nice um, and a very refreshing, great way to start the evening with an Embrosh amber gin and tonic. Already just the yeah. smell the and smell of it, of course. It smells incredible. Now, something <laughs> that I've also picked up quite recently, uh, Bo, the trend of gin is just massive. Absolutely. We've seen gin bars at weddings. <laughs> We've seen, I mean, all over. Where do you think this trend is going now? It's still growing. Believe it or not, it really is still growing. And the thing is, it's because gin itself is just so versatile. It's not necessarily a daytime drink. It's not necessarily a nighttime drink. It can be enjoyed pretty much afternoon or evening. Also, people can really kind of let their creativity flow with the types of garnishes, the different types of tonics, and it gets really quite fun and exciting to do. The ratios when it comes to getting the perfect taste of your gin and your tonic. So the correct ratio for the perfect gin and tonic is one part gin and two parts tonic. A lot of the times we see people kind of pouring in the whole uh, tin of tonic into their gins and essentially it kind of overpowers the gin. We are here to make let the gin shine. So just two parts of tonic to one part gin. So now we gotta kind of look at the flavor profile of the gin. So our Embarrage Amber is our rich and aromatic variant. So it's got these beautiful, bold, rich flavors. So the kind of things we wanna garnish it with are things like some citrus, but we're not gonna go a fresh citrus such as a lime or a lemon. We're gonna go a little bit more of like an orange type of citrus. So I'm gonna pop one of these dehydrated citrus wheels in here. And then we're gonna take a few strawberries. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take some pink peppercorns. All right, ladies, so that is my perfect amber gin and tonic. Who would like the first taste? I'm a lover of gin and tonic, so I'd never say no to a glass. Whilst Domi is having a, a, a little sip, I'm all about taking things way back, Bo. I wanna find out the history of Inverosh. Where is it from? And Inverosh was founded by our CEO and founder, Lorna Scott. And she essentially took a very long time, a good three years, in order to come up with the perfect concept for all the uniquely original gins. So back in 2011, on the 16th of December, the very first batch of Inverosh was sold and was actually sold out of Lorna's house, which happened to be in Still Bay. And even more importantly to that is that because we are in the Western Cape and we live in this beautiful floral biome known as the Cape Floral Kingdom, Inverosh pioneered the use of fambos as an ingredient in our gyms. How's it tasting? It is so floral, like you were saying. It's nice and floral, but I can also still get those earthy tones from the fame boss that you're talking about there. And I'm definitely getting the smell of that peppercorn there. It's it's divine. So then, Bo, what would be the best way to enjoy this GNT, especially using this flavor variant? So once again, we're gonna take our gin glass. We're gonna add a little bit of ice in. So again, what I'm gonna do with my Embrosh Vedant for our perfect serve is I'm actually going to pour a double. Again, we're gonna add our tonic in. Just remember our ratio, one to two. I think now it's time to talk about the innovative brand that is in Varage. Always having something new up their sleeves. Is this something that we can expect in 2022? Where is the brand heading? So what's new at the moment and what's currently happening is our gin academies that have just popped up in iconic locations throughout the country. So we have just launched one in Durban and we have one in Joburg over at the Four Seasons West Westcliff. There's one in Cape Town at Misfits. So what this experience is, is it's basically um, a gin school or a gin academy where people come in for a two hour session where they learn how to distill gin and they leave with their very own bottle of gin. So they completely select their own ingredients and their own flavors 
and two hours later they come out with their very own bottle. Now you've made this GNT quite different already to Dumi's. I'm already seeing vast differences in colors, ingredients. Yeah, absolutely. So of course our Embrage Verdant is a completely different flavor profile to the Amber. And this is our soft and floral variant. So we are looking at things that kind of complement those flavors. And the type of uh, garnishes that I've used here are of course cinnamon quills. Again, this is something that most people just have in their cupboards. And of course some fresh figs. I'm going to take a little bit of um, lemon zest as well and I'm just going to drop it into the gin. Give that a little stir just to bring that beautiful aroma and kind of enhance those beautiful citrus notes from the gin. Mm. I feel like this is so much more than just a GNT. Ne? The touch of lime zest is so perfect and definitely those floral flavors are coming out very, very strongly. Yes. Bo, I don't think this master clock is complete without us actually using the shakers. I mean, you've, I see you've got them here, so there's got to be a cocktail that we can make with them. Didn't you promise us some martinis? I did. Yeah. I did. But here's the trick, is we are not going to be using shakers today. We are actually going to be using a mixing glass and stirring our martinis. So we all know that famous line, shaken, not stirred. Well, today I'm going to teach you and show you why it is better to stir martini than it is to actually shake it. So what I need is I'm going to be using my Embrage Gin Classic and I'm going to need a little bit of vermouth. Thank you so much. And before you go further, I mean, shake and not stirred, what, what difference does it make? So the whole idea behind shaking a drink, essentially you are cooling it down and you're also adding a little bit of air into it, so you're aerating the drink. Now the whole thing about a martini, because it is such a spirit forward cocktail, the more you shake it, the more watered down it's going to be. So with stirring, it just slows that process down, it brings out a nice cool drink, and of course it just mixes a lot better. And I suppose it gives you that flavour punch that you want. <laughs> yes, of course, that's what a martini is for. So this is a technique that you kind of have to practice a little bit, so it's not a normal sort of stir that you would a pot, but it's quite a science behind this. So you sort of got to hold the spoon in a specific way, so between your middle fingers right there, and essentially all you really want to do is just push the ice around. I la 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 can hear. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> it's not making a noise, so this is what we like to call a sort of silent stir. What we're going to do next is we are going to strain our martini into our ma martini glass or our coupe glass. Because we are using our Embrage Classic today, um, I'm actually going to be using a little lemon zest to garnish this martini. I know a lot of the times you see an olive, but the nice thing about the Embrage Classic is that it's got a beautiful zesty sort of citrusy note to it and it really pops with just a little zest of lemon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it over the glass, I'm going to give that little lemon a little squeeze and a little twist and in your fingers you'll feel those essences kind of releasing. I mean, Dumi, if you look very carefully, did you see mm, as soon as both <laughs> almost uh, twisted it, you could just see the essence popping out. And what you want to do is you actually just want to gently rub the rim of your glass with that beautiful zest. So when you bring it up to your nose, you can actually smell it. Cheers. <laughs> All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to introduce the creative collection number three known as the Coca Cola to you ladies and ask you guys to use this. So this is actually a very special gin and it was launched last year back in 2021 and it's part of our three creative collection variants. And what's really interesting and exciting about this, these gins is that they're all limited editions and that's the reason I don't have the previous two with me. Every bottle comes with one of these vials it is natural colouring, so there are no preservatives, no artificial colourants. It's made with hibiscus and you can essentially add this into your bottle of gin and it goes pink. And you'll notice in time that it actually does fade and that just goes to show that it's all natural ingredients. Now Tumi, before we get started, um, any game plan? My game plan is to keep it creative. I don't know what my game plan is just yet, I'm just going to let it come to me. I'm going to let it come to me. Okay, lead the way. Right, ladies, are you guys ready? Yep. Yeah. Shoot. So three, two, one, off you go. What I believe will give me the edge in the GNT competition is I've already got pink eyeshadow. I'm going to keep the theme going. I'm going to make mine pink. My name is Palisa, which means flower. Add some rose petals in there. You know, kind of give it that thing and hope for the best.
would I be doing the wrong thing by adding some uh, dehydrated apple, even though I've got some rose petals in here? Do the two flavor profiles go? I mean, they would, but if I were you uh, and you want a little bit of an extra hint there, I would kind of leave that apple out and just leave it as it is. <laughs> I'm not going to say whether that's fair or not, but I'm just going to say. We say that there are no rules. Come on now, Tulsa. Be a team player. True, true. I'm not going to say being a chef is going to give me the edge because I've realized that making a drink is a scientific process all on its own, but I'm just hoping for the best, honestly. Do me, what's the name of your cocktail? Chumichanga. <laughs> nice. And That's yours? So Bali's passionate pioneer. Mm. Mm. Triple P. Interesting. Good luck, girl. <laughs> Cheers, ladies. This is going to be a very tough one because both ladies seem very competitive. So to me, I'm starting with yours. And I see in here you've got some blackberries, you've got a little bit of cinnamon and some mint. And I do remember you muddling the, the blackberries as well. Okay, so I'm going to have a sip presentation. It looks quite good. Dumi, how are you feeling? Are you nervous just whilst Bo is kind of... I'm curious as to what that tastes like. <laughs> it's, that's actually, it's actually quite nice. Felisa, I'm going to start with yours again. So you've got some rose petals, some pink peppercorns, some strawberries and some blueberries and um, some lime or lemon zest. Just a little bit. So your drink looks really, really pretty. The only sort of criticism I would give is maybe just fill it up a little bit more with ice. It kind of looks like somebody's you know, a little bit watered down in a sense, but I'm sure it will taste great. Out of 10, to me, I'm gonna give you a seven. Thank you. That's good. I'm happy with that. <laughs> and Palesa, you, I think I'm gonna go six and a half. Well, congratulations to me as the winner. <laughs> but I think you can't go wrong with the Coco Capenzas, yeah. isn't it? I think we've just done well, girl. Well done. Well yeah. done. I'm glad we did this and I got to make my first cocktail, but I do know that myself and other people wanna know more about it. So on the socials, where can we find you? Where do we get more info? Of course, so if you guys want to follow um, us on Instagram, we actually have two pages. We've got our South African page and now we have officially just launched our global page, which is really exciting. So for our SA page, it's at Embrosh underscore SA. And for our global page, it's just at Embrosh. Bo, hats off. Thank to you. you. Thank you so much for bringing Embrosh to us. And Domi, what are the opponents? Yeah, I'm just happy I learned so much about gin. Yeah. Well, remember, if you are over the age of 18 and would like to find out more information on this exclusive experience, please do visit www.envirage.com. Remember, alcohol is not served to persons under the age of 18. And remember, drink responsibly. There is only one word that truly embraces humanity, nature, by honoring her abundance and ensuring the effect of what we do today ensures our tomorrow. Inverosh, by nature.